The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. L-S-M-F-T. 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 Yes, sir. You said it. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Year after yes, year. Yes, today, tomorrow, always, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Year after year, at auction after auction, independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. This fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. At 50, American. Just sit there, Benny, and keep your trap shut. Yeah, one false move and we'll slug you. But, fellas, please, untie me. My program is on. I should be there. I'll lose my job if I miss my first broadcast. You're going to miss them all, Benny. What? You ain't going to drive us nuts anymore. For 15 years, we've been listening to that, Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. <laughs> well, we've had enough of it, see? Yeah, let's bump them off. No, 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 no. Please, please don't kill me. I don't want to die. Spare my life. I'll make it worth your while. I'll give you each $10. <laughs> Please, fellas, don't, don't kill me. Go ahead, Joe. Let him have it. Wait a minute. We ain't had no fun. Let's torture him first. Okay. I'll burn him with my cigarette. No, 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 no. no don't burn me. Don't burn me. Don't. What kind of a cigarette? <laughs> a lucky strike. Okay, burn me. <laughs> burn me where it'll show. After all, lucky strikes are made of the light that night. That fine, that naturally my light, light. Let go of my tongue. <laughs> What's the matter with you guys, anyway? All right, Joe, we've stalled long enough. Lift them out of their chair and lay them on a table. Okay, but I want to do a neat job on this guy. Hand me my rubber gloves. Uh, here. No, no, fellas, don't, don't kill me. Don't, I'll make it $11. I mean it. Don't ready, me. ready. Knife, knife. Axe, axe. Poison, poison. Rope, rope. Knife, knife. You've got that already. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> Please, fellas. Gun, gun. Bullet, bullet. Oh. Atomic bomb. Atomic bomb. What? Give it to him. <laughs> Oh, it's you, Rochester. Yeah. Gee, see what a nightmare I just had. I was with two fellas, two of them. What a horrible dream. Did you get stuck with the check again? <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. I dreamt I was held captive by a couple of thugs. They're going to keep me from going back on the air. It was terrible. It must have been, boss. You look pale. Sick. Let me see your tongue. Ah. Uh. Mmm, fingerprints. <laughs> That's funny. There shouldn't be. You wore rubber gloves. Uh, what'd you say? Oh, nothing, nothing. You weren't there. Doggone, boss. That sure must have been a realistic dream. Look how you thrashed around in the bed. Yeah. You even pulled an arm off your teddy bear. <laughs> Darn it. And I've had it ever since I was 30. <laughs> what a nightmare. Seems like I always dream like that before an opening broadcast. Well, I better start getting dressed. Ow. Rochester, I told you to shorten my nightgown. <laughs> Why didn't you? I was going to, boss, but I hated to cut those rosebuds off the bottom. <laughs> Well, get the car, Rochester, and as soon as I get dressed, we'll go to the studio. Yes, sir. Drive carefully, Rochester. I'm nervous. You know how it is before an opening broadcast. What are you worrying about, boss? You've been on the radio 15 years. Well, 
If they ain't found out by now, they ain't never gonna find out. <laughs> I guess not, but take it easy anyway. I don't want to have a lot of... Rochester, when you come to an intersection, blow your horn. I can't, the rubber bulb is broken. <laughs> well, then put it in your mouth and blow it. But Trilla won't let me. <laughs> Anyway, here we are at NBC. Want to come in and watch the show, Rochester? No, thanks, boss. I'll sit here and listen to it on the radio. Okay. The earphones are in the glove compartment. <laughs> Here's the key. Good luck, boss. Thanks. Take back your samba, hi, your rumba, hi, your conga, hi, yi, yi. Take back your samba. I beg your pardon, Mr. Benny. Yes? Uh, may I have your autograph, please? My autograph? Certainly. Uh, would you mind signing it in this pail of water? I want to try out my new pen. <laughs> <laughs> sure, just a minute. I'll pull up my sleeve. There you are. Thank you. You're welcome. Take back your rumba, hi, your samba, hi. Your... See, those pens are becoming popular. Maybe I ought to do some jokes about them on my program. Nah, the public isn't ready for it yet. <laughs> hey, back your samba, hi, your rumba, hi, your conga, hi. Hiya, Don. Well, hello, Jack. Well, <laughs> well, well. Hey. Well, Don, we'll be on the air in a few minutes. Yes, sir. How does it feel getting back in the groove again, Jack? Well, to tell you the truth, uh, Don, I'm a little excited. I mean, I feel good, but I'm, I don't know, I got a nervous stomach. I know just how you feel, Jack. I, I got a nervous stomach, too. Well, you're just about 30 inches more nervous than I am. I guess. <laughs> but you'll be all right. See, Don, have you got everything all set for your part of the program? You know, just the way you want it? Uh, I sure have, Jack. And I took the liberty of hiring a quartet to work with me during the commercials. A quartet? For the commercial? Oh, I knew That's you'd like novel. it. So I'll tell you what I did, Jack. I put them under contract for eight weeks, and it will cost you only $500 a week. Isn't that wonderful? Why, yes. I mean, yes, yes. <laughs> but, Don, that quartet must be sensational for that kind of money. Oh, right? they are, Jack. This will start a new style in radio, talking commercials with a big vocal background. You'll be crazy about it. I know, but $500 a week for eight weeks, well... If it's as good as you say, Don, it might be worth it. Uh, how much time have we got before we go on the air? Well, about five minutes. I'll have the orchestra warm up. I'll be right out. Okay. Take back your samba. Hi, your rumba. Hi, your conga. Mm, $500 for a quartet. hi yi yi <laughs> I can't keep moving. Hi, my chassis. Hi, any longer. hi yi yi Stand by. Take it, boys. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson.
Ladies and gentlemen, it has been said that Jack Benny has made more people laugh than any other comedian who ever lived. And now we bring you the man who said it, Jack Benny! <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, for our first show, that was a very nice introduction, but I, I wish you wouldn't make people think that I'm conceited enough to say that I made more people laugh than any other comedian. <laughs> I mean, it, it's true, but I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don, here I am starting my 50th, my 15th <laughs> year... <laughs> My 15th year in radio. And Don, just think, for 13 of those years, you've been with me. I know, Jack, and I'll always be grateful. Well. Why, when I started out with you 13 years ago, I, I was just a little nobody. Yeah. And look at me today. A big, fat slob. <laughs> Oh, don't thank me, Don. I'd have done the same for anybody. <laughs> and, Don, the nice part of our association is that it's always been so pleasant and happy. I mean, I don't know. I like just being around you, especially when you laugh. You know, I haven't heard you laugh for 17 weeks. Go ahead, Don, laugh. Oh, no, no, Jack, you, you oh, Come on, Don, come on, laugh. <laughs> come on, Don. <laughs> Oh, come on. No, laugh some more. Come on, Don. No, Don, hard. Real hard. This time. Harder, Don. Harder. <laughs> now do you... Now do you people sitting in the audience, if you ever want to get in here again, that's what I mean. <laughs> and, Don, I know it's a little early in the show... But I want to hear this idea you have for the commercial. You know, with the quartet. You know, after all, it's $500. I'm, are the boys ready? Oh, yes, they're still rehearsing, but they'll be here in just a few minutes. Good, good. I can... Oh, well, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hello, Don. Hello. <laughs> Mary, I haven't seen you in four months. Let me look at you. Gee, you look swell. You look wonderful. Different. What have you done to yourself? Well, Jack, this summer I really took it easy and I gained 12 pounds. 12 pounds? Let me look at you again. Hmm. Yes, sir. Hmm. 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 And your face looks fuller, too. <laughs> Come here, Mary. Come here. Let me see if I can still get my arm around. Oh, Jack, don't be so silly. Now, come here, Mary. Come here, Jack. He's got you now. Oh, Jack, now stop it. Ooh, you're so strong. Come here. Come here. Give me a kiss. Jack, you're hurting me. Where'd you get those muscles? Eastern Columbia, Broadway at night. <laughs> now, come on. It's well, department store. Come here, Mary. Come on. Now, give me a kiss. A nice big one. Oh, huh? all right. All now, right. Come on. There. Gee, what a kiss. What's come over you? I don't know. I'm nervous. Maybe it's the quiver you like. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, Mary, wait, Mary, Mary, uh, tell me, what did you do all summer? Well, I worked most of the time. I got laryngitis and made a lot of money. You got laryngitis and made a lot of money? What did you do? I tiptoed into radio studios and whispered Martha Ivers. <laughs> Oh, is that you? Say, Mary, Mary, are you glad to be back on the program again? I sure am. I am, too. But you know, Mary, I must admit I'm a little nervous about the opening show. Jack, if you think you're nervous, what about Phil Harris? He has two opening shows today. Well, as a rule, I'm not... <coughs> what? <laughs> what did you say? Uh, Phil has two opening shows, yours and the Fitch Bandwagon. He has his own program. Phil has his own program? <laughs> Gee, I didn't know that. Hmm. That's gratitude for you. The least he could have done is let me know. Could have dropped me a postcard. I called you up. No, my phone's disconnected during the summer. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, his own program. Phil. Gosh, man, what in the world can Phil do for a full half hour? I don't know, but if he adds two more choruses to That's What I Like About the South, he's in. <laughs> I can't get over it. It's 
So Phil has his own program. Do you mind? Of course not. I like to see people get ahead. I want everyone to be a success. In fact, I'd even like to see Dennis Day get his own show. He has. What? <laughs> Mary, did I hear you correctly? If that thing in your ear is connected, you did. Now, Mary, this is... <laughs> Mary, this is no time to be funny. You're kidding about Dennis, aren't you? No, he starts his own program Thursday night for Colgate. You're not mad, are you? Well, of course I'm not mad. To be in fine shape if I let little things like that bother me. What do you think keeps me looking so young and strong? Eastern Columbia, Broadway at night. <laughs> I mean, besides that. Anyway, with me, it's just a matter of principle, that's all. If Phil and Dennis feel that they can go on their own shows and get laughs, it's... Say, it's, it's all right with me. I don't care. Say, perhaps the little chicks feel that the, that the nest that I built is too small and that they, <laughs> that they no longer need the sheltering wing of the mother hen. If you lay an egg, I'm going to punch you right in the nose. <laughs> Mary, I was just well, being... Well, Jack, Jack, we can do the commercial now. The quartet's ready. Oh, good, good. Mary, I want you to hear this. This is the new commercial Don thought of with a quartet behind it. I got him tied up for eight weeks at $500 a week. Go ahead, Don. Let's hear it. Okay. Ready, boys? Let's go. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Yes, sir. You bet. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Yes, lucky strike means fine tobacco. Mm. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And lucky strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Lucky strikes are made of that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. So for real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. For this, I'm paying $500? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, quality of product is essential to continuing success. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don, is that all? Yes. For that, I'm paying $500 a week for eight weeks? Stand aside, Don. I want to talk to this quartet. Listen, fellas, if you think I'm going to pay you $500 a week just for that, you're crazy. Now cut that out! <laughs> and get out of here. Don, I thought you had something... Hiya, else. Jackson. Hello, folks. Don't feel low. You'll soon hear Harris on his very own show, and hallelujah. <laughs> yes, sir. Lay that beautiful old program applause on me. Leave me know it. Make me know it. Phil. <laughs> Phil, Mary told me all about it. And I'd like to have a little talk with you about your own show. Sorry, Jack, I ain't using no stooges. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you about that, yet. I only want to know one thing. You've been with me for nine years. Why did you go out and take another show? M-O-N-E-Y, M-O-N-E-Y. <laughs> so that's why, eh? Well, that's the trouble with you, Phil. All you think about is money. Women and money. Well, I don't know of a better parlay, do you, bub? <laughs> I knew I didn't have that nightmare for nothing. Hello, Donzie. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Livy. Hello, Phil. You look great. Doesn't he, Jack? Yeah, yeah, he looks swell. Did you go away for the summer, Phil? Yeah, I sure did, Livy. We were there, just the two of us, and we really had a wonderful time. Just the two of you? Who'd you go with? Ray Milan. Oh. <laughs> you and Ray Milan? Yeah, we lost all of July and part of August. <laughs> Of all the good you're going to do me, you're going to lost September and October, too. Now, now, Mr. Benny, please don't be facetious. Oh, fine. But, uh, Phil, where'd you get a word like that? My uncle died and left it to me. Oh, <laughs> congratulations. But you know, Jackson, it's mighty good to see the old gang again, and I can't begin to... Say, who are these four guys? I told you to get out of here! <laughs> Quartet, $500. Eight weeks yet. Where's Dennis? It's time for a song. He's not here yet. Well, I saw him this morning. He was going to rehearse for his own program. His own program. His own program. What should I do with my program? No coaching from the audience. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I'm going to call Dennis's house and find out why he's not here. 
Operator, operator. Oh, Mabel, what is it, Gertrude? It must be Mr. Benny Oh, yeah I wonder what Notorious wants now <laughs> I'll find out Yes, Mr. Benny Who? Dennis Day I'll try and get him for you Gee, Mabel Don't it feel strange Getting back to work After a vacation? I'll say But I really enjoyed myself I spent two lovely weeks At Lake Winnipehakamuka In the pine <laughs> It sure was invigorating. Where did you go, Gertrude? I spent my two weeks in the mountains at Ginsburg's Rest. <laughs> and what did you do? Ginsburg let me alone, so I rested. <laughs> Gertrude, I had a wonderful time. Every day I went swimming. Look, here's a picture of me in my bathing suit. Oh, boy, what a picture. Doesn't even look like you. Where'd you get those beautiful curves? Eastern Columbia, Broadway at nine. <laughs> well, what do you know? Operator, operator. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Benny. Dennis Day does not answer. Okay. How do you like that? It's a fine program. You think at least everybody in my cast would show up on time? Who's late, Mr. Benny? Dennis Day. Should have been here an hour ago. Why don't you call him? I did. I just tried... Dennis! Where have you been? <laughs> Dennis, I just tried to get you on the phone to find out that why you... Hey, wait a minute, kid. You're soaking wet. Is it raining out? No, a man asked me, me, me for my autograph and I fell in. You so nervous. It's not your own show yet, you know. That's what I'm <laughs> Get nervous on your own show. <laughs> Listen, Dennis, there's something I want to talk to you about. Why did you go out and get your own program without consulting me? Well... And after all I've done for you. I found you when you were just a kid. I groomed you for radio. I gave you your big chance. I let you sing on the air every Sunday. I've been doing this for your kid for, for eight years. Now, why did you go out and take another show? I was hungry. <laughs> you silly boy. Why didn't you tell me you were hungry? Yeah, Mother Hen Benny could have laid you a couple of eggs. Mary, there's no time to be facetious. Now, Dennis... <laughs> Phil, stop taking bows. I knew that word before you did. <laughs> You knew it before Webster did. Yes, yes, all right. Now, Dennis, I want to tell you something. And, Phil, this goes for you, too. You can all have your own shows if you want to. If necessary, I'll get myself a new cast, new people. People who can get laughs, like, like the mad Russian, like Senator Claghorn. Somebody, I said somebody said Claghorn. I said it, and I'm going out to get... Out with it, son, out Listen, with it. Listen, I'm going your to get... Your mouth wide open, but your tongue's on Look, the I'm going to That's get... That's why you can't express yourself. Harold, that is. Oh, what's the use? <laughs> what's the use? This is a fine, how do you do? How do you do? Dennis, stop! <laughs> now, listen, I meant what I said, and that goes for everybody here. And you four guys, too. Mm. Oh, for heaven's sake. Go ahead and sing, Dennis. I'm going home. Come on, Mary. I'll drive you home. The rose must remain with the sun and the rain Or its lovely promise won't come true Belong, and a dream must be a dream for two. No good alone to each his own. For me, there's you. If a flame is to grow, there must be a 
aglow To open each door There's a key I need you, I know I can't let you go Your touch means too much To me Who lives must insist On two more to be kissed Or they'll never know what love can do To each his own I found my own One and only You Take it easy, Rochester. Nice song Dennis picked for his first show. To each his own show. The fine... <laughs> fine season I'm gonna have. Phil's got his own show. Dennis has his own show. I don't know why they had to go out and get their own programs anyway. Well, Jack, what are you so mad at them for? Don Wilson has four shows and you're not mad at him. He pays me commission. <laughs> Rochester, leave Miss Livingston off first and then take me home. Yes, sir. And take it easy, Rochester, will you? Oh, Jack, stop being so nervous and upset. Why wouldn't I be upset? Nobody thinks of me. Phil has his own show. Dennis has his own show. My writers are still stranded on the gambling ship. <laughs> Stuck with a lousy quartet. This can go on week after week, month after month, year after year. That's radio for you. It's enough to drive a guy crazy. Well, then why don't you quit? I will not. <laughs> <laughs> Every year, the same thing. Make no mistake. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Mr. Charles Jackson Gunter of Mount Airy, North Carolina, who has been an independent tobacco buyer for 53 years, said, Season after season, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy tobacco that's really tops in smoking quality. Fine, ripe, smooth-smoking tobacco that pays off an extra smoking enjoyment. I've smoked Luckies myself for 29 years. Independent tobacco experts like Mr. Gunter know that it takes fine tobacco to make a fine smoke. Yes, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's programmer, Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. <laughs> and Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. That's 60, dollar bit, 60, American. Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike, the cigarette that means fine tobacco. Say, boss, are you going out for dinner or are you going to stay home? No, I think I'll go out. Oh, with Miss Livingston? No, no, she said she was going to bed early. Well, I'll, I'll call up and get a date. Hello, National Broadcasting Company. Hello, Mabel. No, this is Gatewood. Oh, let me talk to Mabel. I'm sorry, she left... This is NBC, the National Broadcasting... KFI Los Angeles, Earl C. Anthony Incorporated. <laughs> 